Right, babe, I better scoop. Never park illegally in a court car park. I learnt that lesson the hard way. Is your phone charged? Yeah. Right, good. Well, I'll keep it on you and make sure you ring me in the brakes. Yes, I will. But please, try not to keep thinking about it. As if. But you know, Sarah has been feeling much better, so maybe I could come with you and Dad can stay here and look after the kids. And sit in a freezing cold corridor all day. Listen, stay in the warm with Sarah and Jack. You're going to need all your strength for your turn tomorrow. OK. Well, text me from the courtroom. I'm on it. Babe, look, I know it's tough, but just try and keep things together, yeah? Gentlemen, quiet in court. Are you Chastity Spencer? Yeah. Mrs. Spencer is accused of the murder of Carl Thomas King between the 17th and 18th of October 2012 under common law. Your Honour, I appear on behalf of the prosecution, and my friend, Mr. Roberts, appears on behalf of the defendant. Mrs. Spencer. How do you plead? <clears throat> Not guilty, Your Honour. The defendant will claim she acted in self-defence, fearing she was about to be raped. I will prove to you that these were in fact the actions, the premeditated actions, of a desperate woman embroiled in three relationships and terrified she was about to lose everything. Her victim was a man she once jilted at the altar. After pocketing the £30,000, he gave her to pay for their wedding. But her recent wedding, to Daniel Spencer, was an attempt to create the impression of a normal life after the web of deceit she had woven. Now, one thing stood between her and this new start, Carl King. You see, Mr King had learned of her affair with Cameron Murray an affair she wanted to keep secret at all costs because Cameron was engaged to Debbie, her niece. You will also hear how Mrs. Spencer slipped away from her latest wedding reception for a secret assignation, an unusual act for a new bride and one that would end in tragedy when, with a brick, she beat Carl King to death. <laughs> so hurry up, grab yourself a drink, get a seat, and be prepared to be chugged. That's mugged for charity. Hey. <laughs> now, the script was written by myself and the children, and yes, I'd like to think if I hadn't have found my calling, I would have been a famous actor slash writer slash director. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and dead donkeys, <laughs> the greatest story ever told. Ah, yeah, but first, um, Amelia would like us all to say a small prayer for her cousin. Quick, the innkeeper's gonna do a bunk. What? Go, I'll cover you. Excuse me. I want to say a prayer for my little cousin, Archie. He's like the baby Jesus, but smaller and in a glass box. Everybody, close your eyes and put your hands like this. Dear God, I know you are busy because it's coming up to Christmas but Archie needs your help. He's little and poorly, so please don't take him up to heaven yet, cos we love him, lords. Amen. And in Mrs Spencer's defence, I will show you that, in fact, Carl King was obsessed with chastity, jealous and unable to move on. Full of remorse for her previous affair with Mr Murray, she begged him not to ruin Debbie's relationship out of spite. She also feared the medical repercussions of upsetting her niece because this was no straightforward pregnancy. The child Debbie was carrying was not, in fact, Mr. Murray's. What are you trying to say? Nothing, will you shut up? The father of this child is Debbie's ex partner, Andrew Sugden. And this unusual arrangement was. Unusual to arrangement? 
She had that kid to save Sarah's life. Sit down and keep quiet. He's trying to make my daughter look as bad as that selfish cow, and I'm not having it. I'll be having you taken down to the cells, and I'll clear the public gallery for the remainder of this trial. There won't be any need to do that, because he's going now, you aren't lying you? lying slag, you never cared about Debbie, or you wouldn't have wrecked her life. Got to keep on plodding onwards with your precious load. But Mary, a really rubbish hotel. Surely we can afford a room here. <laughs> I hope so, cos my contractions are two minutes apart and, most importantly, there's free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, my wife's about to have a baby. Can we check in? The stable's available. But the rates are double and breakfast not included. That's a right rip-off. Can't you get us a better deal? <laughs> <laughs> Mum? Go on, then. <laughs> Tough luck, scroungers. You should have booked online for the internet rates. <laughs> <laughs> Dig deep. Hey, well done, mate. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Where is she? Um, Even Jacob's mum came, and she's in prison. Crisp. Oh, God, I love you so, so much. <laughs> Look at you in your tie and everything. Oh, gosh. Can you go and get changed? Yeah. yeah. First to work, all that clapping. Right, sir. Uh... Take a number, there's a queue. Mm. Where? I thought you might have called. Yeah, sorry, it were, um, it were all a bit last minute, you know. Lots of paperwork and that. I wasn't sure that I'd make it, so I didn't really want to let him down. Can't it's not quite believe I'm balloons. here. <laughs> Jacob was going to make you one. Pete's sake, David, give your bride a snug. You confirmed to my learned friend your considerable experience as a forensic pathologist, and you told the court that the cause of death was blunt trauma from a heavy, forceful blow to the head. Yes, that's right. Is it possible to tell if Chastity Spencer struck out in self-defence? No. So you were also unable to determine if the defendant struck out with the clear intent to kill the victim. So it must follow that it is entirely possible that the defendant is telling the truth and that she merely intended to incapacitate Mr. King long enough to effect her escape. Objection. Thank you. No more questions, Your Honour. Anything to add, Miss Fisher? Oblige, Your Honour. Thank you. Nothing further. Good, that's fine. Out of chassis. Oh, she looked terrified, Cameron. Yeah, it's hard to forgive her, but I have to say it pained me seeing her in such a state. What do you expect? She's fighting for her life. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You're not still tripping up over that bottom lip, are you? Babe, you know how sorry I am that I couldn't get back in time. We'll just have to watch it on the video later. I'll tell you what. We'll plug it into the telly, watch it on the big screen. Paper money, not coins. <laughs> Here's his mother's son. <laughs> So that was it. Everyone got to go home early. No, just us and the jury. The barristers had some mumbo-jumbo to chat through with the judge. Mumbo-jumbo? <laughs> there was legal issues, so they dismissed the jury for the day. And that's what I just said. Anyway, it's just as well you weren't there. It was all pretty gruesome. And that prosecution lady seems a bit fierce. No, don't say that. I'm dreading giving evidence as it is. Well, can't say it's looking too grand for Chad. Yo, we'll see, won't we, Zach, when everyone's had a chance to have their say? Oh, come on, mate, game of darts. Take it out on the board, yeah? Thanks for the warning. Rushed to the court to find that you lot have sloped off early. Oh, and did your meeting go well? Yeah, it's fine. I'll sort it down. Right, well, I'm off to do some Christmas shopping. What would you like? Ooh, best Christmas present I could think of would be waving Chaz goodbye for good, yeah. Nothing else would top that, really. Would it kill you to crack a smile? Would it kill you to stand by your sister? In with the 
destroy Debbie. And do you think your little display in court helped her? Who are you? My mother. Hey, I'm just going to make my way over. Where are the kids? Uh, Andy's. Dad, still be too hard on your dad. I'm sure he regrets opening his door. I had to ring and give an update, didn't I? I didn't mean to kick off. I just got wound up by it all, you know? Oh, it's fine. I don't blame you. I'd have done the same, seeing Charles sat there playing the innocent victim. So you're all going to get there early tomorrow and get a good seat. I'm going to put on a right show. Tell that jury what a cheating, murdering bitch she really is. Charlie's going to be looking out of that prison window for the rest of her days. You and her, never going to be together. You ruined my life. Now watch me ruin yours. <laughs> 